This is part two of section 2.6. We want to find the upper and lower bounds here. Okay, so we need to find our P over Q values. My P values come from 13. So this is plus or minus one, plus or minus 13. And my Q values come from three. So that's plus or minus one, plus or minus three. So P over Q would be one, one third, 13, and 13 thirds. Okay, so let's start testing our positive, uh, um, our positive possibilities, and I'm gonna start with the integers. So I test one, Bring down the three and multiply and we get three and we get negative 17. And when we're testing positives, we want all positive across the bottom to be a bound. So that's not one. Okay, so let's check 13. Okay, so since this is not an upper bound, one third is also not. So I'm, I'm now either 13 or 13 thirds. And you know, you're actually gonna have to test both of them anyway. So let's do 13 thir um, thirds. Okay, bring down the three, you get a 13 and you get a negative seven and we got a negative, so not one. Now let's do 13 just to make sure that's my last possibility anyway. Bring down the three to get 39, subtract 20 for 19, 19 times 13 is 247, and add that, you get 275. Multiply, you get 3,575, which gives you 3,594. And I think you can see that you're going to get a pretty big number here, which gives me a positive answer there. So my upper bound here is 13. All right, now let's check for a lower bound. So I'm gonna check negative one. Okay, bring down the three negative three, negative 23, positive 23, and then 51, negative 51, negative 32. So far I do have alternating signs, positive 32, which gives me 19. I do have alternating signs. So negative one is a lower bound, but it may not be the largest one least upper bound, greatest lower bound. So now I need to check the number smaller, I mean, well, larger. I need to check one third, negative one third, just to make sure. All right. Bring down the three, negative one, negative 21, positive seven, 35, negative 35 thirds, which gives me 22 thirds, and I have two positives in a row, so that is also a no. My lower bound is negative one. Okay, 
So like I said, we're going to be using this to help direct us when we're finding our answers. So this is just a summary of the things that we know. We want to find the maximum number of real zeros using the degree of the polynomial function. So if your, your degree is 3, you should expect 3 answers. Okay. Find the possible number of positive and negative zeros using Descartes' rule of signs. First thing we did. We're going to write this, the set of possible rational zeros. That's our P over Q thing. Then this says that we should start finding our upper and lower bounds. Okay. And if we find the zero, then we're going to use the depressed equation to do further. Okay. And if we find an upper bound, we discard everything larger, so on. And then we're going to repeat that for lower bounds. Okay, and then if we get down to a depressed equation that is quadratic, we have all kinds of methods for finding that solution, including the quadratic formula, so that's what we will do. Okay, now before we go on and start working big problems, I want to remind you of complex numbers. And generally speaking, uh, for whatever reason, we use the letter Z for a lot of complex numbers. So if z is equal to a plus bi, a is called the real part, b is called the imaginary part, they do need to be in this order. It is always real part and then imaginary part. If you are using a computer program, these are all programmed for this direction, this order, and it causes, things, uh, causes problems if you don't do that. i is defined to be the square root of negative 1. So this is what allows us to take uh, square, uh, square roots of negative numbers. And here, I'm just going to work a couple of problems that you should know how to do already um, without going through the whole huge P over Q business because these are, are special cases. I want to solve x cubed minus 8 is equal to 0. Now, if you see how something factors, you should do that. Okay? This is a difference of cubes. And the difference of cubes formula is this. Okay, so this is a perfect cubed, so my a value is x. 8 is a perfect cube, so my b value is 2. So I rewrite this as x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, I can set this part equal to 0 and see that one of my answers is positive 2. Now I need to set this part equal to 0. Okay, and this is not going to factor because the second part of a difference of cubes never factors. So I need to go to the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And this gives me negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 over 2. The square root of negative 12, first of all, you're going to have an i on the outside because it's negative. And the square root of 12 simplifies to 2i square root of 3 over 2. And now if you factor the 2 out of the top and cancel with the bottom, you get negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3. So your two answers, or your three answers, sorry, which is what I expect because I have a third degree polynomial here, they are 2 and negative 1 minus i square root of 3 and negative 1 plus i square root of 3. Okay, now let's do this one. x to the fourth minus 1 is equal to 0. 
This is a difference of squares because x to the fourth is the same thing as x squared squared. So I can factor x to the fourth minus one as x squared plus one, x squared minus one equal to zero. x squared plus one does not factor any further, but x squared minus one does. Okay. Now I should set each of these equal to zero. These two are easy. If I set this one equal to zero, I'm going to get negative one. If I set this one equal to zero and solve, I get positive one. So those are two of my four solutions that I expect to get. Now let's come over and do x squared plus one equals zero. I can use the quadratic formula if I want to, but this is also set up pretty easily for the square root property. If I subtract one from each side, I get x squared equals negative one. And then if you take the square root of both sides, sorry, you lose that square and you get plus or minus the square root of negative one, which is plus or minus i. So your solution set here, that's one, uh, negative one, one, negative i, and positive i. Four solutions for a fourth degree equation.